it's just absolutely great to be here. And um, so what I'm going to do is give an overview of what I hope, for heaven's sake, we've learned out of this environmental disaster. So I'm going to talk about the strategic science that we've been uh, working on to understand fully. Six months later, where are we? Well, we have lost about 11 people who died during the explosion that we understand. Looking at what have we learned? We've learned a lot about corporate negligence. We've learned a lot about faulty equipment, lack of preparedness, zero. We've learned about disinformation, otherwise known as lying to the public. We've learned a lot about chemical dispersants, haven't we? Anybody not know the word Corexit? Saving BP millions, billions in fines. We learned why our federal agencies went along with the trade-off, although the hazards were known from previous oil spills. We learned how the dispersants shifted the fate of the oil, so now we're stuck with the oil in the plumes and in the sediments on the seafloor. How do we know all this? Because of independent scientists who've been churning up this information. That oil is not going to degrade quickly, unlike some of the information we have been getting. And so we have a huge reservoir of toxicity in the Gulf that's going to be there for decades. But hey, we've had some happy talk along the way, otherwise known as lessening liability 101. These are some of my favorites, but there's a lot more. And the uh, most recent one being this public confidence in seafood safety, based on extensive, fantastic testing. But let me just run these by you, just for old time's sake. Um, the oil spill rate, 1,000 gallons a day. Vast majority of the oil is gone. There are no plumes. Dispersants in oil, not that big of a deal. It's probably just heat stress when, 11, when workers pass out on the cleanup boats. So what are we left with? What's the reality, the legacy? Actually, this is our legacy. Out of the 4.9 million barrels of oil that were spilt, uh, estimated re remaining in the system, 50 to 75 percent. Out of the, uh, after um, applying 2 million almost 2 million gallons of Corexit dispersants. What have we got? Dispersed oil in the system that's not degrading. Result, we have toxicity in the water column for decades. So what are we doing about it? Well, I got tapped, as Nate said, to become part of a science working group, the Strategic Sciences Working Group, formed by the Department of the Interior. Uh, we're independent <clears throat> of the Incident Command, the NERDA process, and BP. Um, our job is to identify for policymakers, including agency heads, uh, s cascades of impacts, consequences, and recommend interventions or policy actions that could actually change the course of the suffering and the stress in the Gulf. So here's the working group at work in New Orleans in September. There's 14 of us, all those minds going crazy, uh, looking at, dissecting this whole event. And after a while, you can see it starts to look like a beautiful mind with Russell Crowe, you know. <laughs> um, we were looking at high points of human and ecosystem stress across many different uh, quadrants and sectors. And my role, because of my background in public health and toxicology, was to inform about human health impacts. And what I'm going to tell you right now is what I delivered to the groups, which was then delivered to the agency heads, which were, and they were not exactly excited to hear this. But I'm just going to tell you the one, two, three, four, there is no safe level of exposure to the carcinogenic, mutagenic, 
and actually teratogenic compounds in oil. Two, the mixture of oil and dispersant increases toxicity many-fold. Three, we're looking at chronic human health impacts over decades in the Gulf. And four, health impacts on sensitive populations, women, pregnant women especially, children, people who are already ill, is a certainty. So this information was recently delivered to several agency heads, and it's going to other agency <laughs> And our report will come out within about a week. We're, we're going to release our findings. I've been working on dispersants because of interested in the, I've been working actually on impacts of toxic chemicals in the marine environment for many years. And uh, so the dispersant issue particularly concerned me. And I went into the Gulf, literally, in late May when it, at a time of very high exposure. And I wanted to take you down with me and just talk about what's down there and what we see. And this uh, footage was provided courtesy of um, Jean-Michel Cousteau, who was down there at the same time. So there were some creepy music that went with it. But anyway, um, I wish, oh, here it is. OK. This makes it even better. But what are we, what are we looking at here? This is oil that dispersant spins, uh, you know, sprayed on. The oil is getting broken up. What does dispersant do? It contains petroleum solvent that breaks up a lipid membrane. So it's breaking the lipid of the oil into tiny bite-sized particles in the food web. Think of yourself as a dolphin going through this stuff, or whatever. Think of yourself as yourself going through this stuff. Um, so you look at these particles. Uh, it, this is adding petroleum to the water column. Petroleum solvents in the dispersant added to the petroleum that's already there, breaking up the petroleum so there's more surface area for exposure. And now why do I say that Corexit plus the oil increases toxicity? I just said that we increase the hydrocarbon exposure in the water column. The dispersants that break down the oil lipid membrane are also breaking down lipid membranes of cell walls. So it takes the oil into the body, into the organs more readily. Once the oil's in the body, it attacks every system in the body. The kidney, liver, um, blood forming systems like red blood cells, nervous system, respiratory system, the brain. And there's no doubt we know that thousands of marine animals were exposed to this oil dispersant mixture. There's 15,000 total resident and migrant species in the Gulf, 33 wildlife refuges, and many of these species are endangered, like the sea turtles. Now, the animal deaths have been estimated. This is the tip of the iceberg, absolutely, because most of the animals that died will never see. Thousands of fish, thousands of birds, hundreds of sea turtles, hundreds of marine mammals, including dolphins. And what about seafood safety? We've been hearing so much about how the public is now very confident about the safety of the seafood in the Gulf, but scientists are finding, a lot, have a lot of issues with the testing. Uh, for example, uh, an area the size of Connecticut was reopened for shrimp fishing based on uh, testing of 12 samples. There's some other issues to this, and including the FDA's equation of how much um, fish you can safely eat a week, but I'm not going into that. Not surprisingly, there are, people are finding oil in the predatory fish now. Oil is in the food chain. This was a fish caught by a fisherman off the coast of Florida in September. Now, human exposure. Uh, this is an Exxon slide. And I want to take a look at what this guy's wearing. This is what the oil industry says we can avoid human exposure by wearing appropriate gear. Anything missing? Everything missing, except for possibly the gloves. Um, there's still 11,000 cleanup workers working down in the Gulf. 
And what about health impacts? What do we know? Well, there's hundreds, probably thousands by now, of health complaints from not only workers but also residents there. Um, they have the symptoms of exposure to oil, skin damage, headaches that last for weeks, heart palpitations, muscle twitching, uh, liver and kidney damage, and bleeding, this uh, hemorrhaging. There's very little hard data. NIH is starting a very large study now. But what we have, um, we have as data is a very small study that showed high levels of solvents in um, the blood of eight people in the Gulf. And the levels were in extremely high. What we're really worried about is the health impacts on pregnant women, children, and people who are sick. The underlying problem is we're poisoned for profit. We are not regulating polluting industries in this country. Dispersants are just the poster child for this. BP has added toxicity in the Gulf for decades for economic reasons primarily, certainly not for concern, public, con, public interest. We're in a litigious corporate culture. We're in a war of misinformation. And we're uh, allowing chemicals companies to hold trade secrets so we don't really even know all the chemicals and the structures and the ingredients of chemicals like the Corexit. And this is, we're looking at, as a result, long-term impacts on people and wildlife. This is, the Gulf, this is reminiscent of other environmental disasters, including the Exxon Valdez spill, and yes, 9-11. We are the lab rats. This has to change. How do we, how is this going to change? Well, the what if, it, this is a very modest what if, but if it actually happened, there would be thunder and lightning. What if corporations actually integrated health and the environment as concerns into profitability? Um, that is the, my overview, and we're going to have a fabulous session on the oil spill here. Thank you.